A warm welcome to today's video in which I'll be explaining what is meant in philosophy by the terms deductive, inductive and abductive. Now these are all different types of reasoning and here what I mean by reasoning is rational patterns of thought. We all know what irrational thought looks like but what we're trying to do in philosophy is rational thought, to practice actively rational thought taking facts that we already know about the world and trying to establish other facts and other claims using premises and conclusions. There are timestamps in today's video and so you can skip to the part about abductive reasoning because I'm sure that that's the one that you've forgotten. Because we are learning about different types of thinking, it's important briefly to understand how the brain works because obviously the brain is where all the thinking takes place. So very briefly, in a nutshell, we have a left hemisphere and a right hemisphere, each of which is specialised for different tasks, for different roles. It performs each side different functions. And so our left brain works on inputs that are explicit, clear and evident. I think of times tables and syntax, that sort of thing. So if I was to claim it's hot in this room, what the left brain is taking from that is all which is clear from that. So the left brain might perform an output such as on a hot day with the sun beaming through the windows and little air conditioning, a room is hot. Okay, there's, that's pretty, pretty self-explanatory there. The right brain, on the other hand, if I was to say the same claim, is going to have a much different output. What the right brain is thinking is, well, I could solve this issue of a, the hot room by opening the windows, by turning on the fan in the corner. And so the right brain then is dealing with information that is implicit. Things like empathy, things like semantics, like meaning. And so each part of the brain has different functions. And I say this to make it clear, to make it less abstract for the left side of the brain as we talk about different forms of reasoning. Because each form of reasoning seems clearly to map on to different parts of the brain. And the first form of reasoning is deductive reasoning. So let's move to deductive arguments. And you'll see which part of the brain is most relevant here. Below is a very famous syllogism. It's a deductive argument from Aristotle. Point one, Socrates is a man. Point two, all men are mortal. Point three, therefore Socrates is mortal. So point one is a fact about the world and that's called a premise. Point two is about the property we have given Socrates and point three is the conclusion. So if we accept that the premises, point one and point two, are true, then we must also accept that the conclusion is true. This is a deductive argument. There's no room for doubt. If you uh, realise, if you recognise, if you agree that the premises are true, then the conclusion must also be true. There's no room for doubt here. And so if, if you're bright, you'll realise what part of the brain this maps onto. Uh, because the left brain is the one that deals with certainty. And deductive arguments deal with complete certainty. There's no room to disagree with the conclusion if you agree with the premises. Now, deduction works because of three laws of logic. If you're a beginner philosopher, this is not relevant to you, but if you are curious about how this works, it works because of the law of non-contradiction, the law of identity, and the law of the excluded middle. And that is how deductive reasoning works. The second type of reasoning that we're going to look at is inductive reasoning. Now, unlike deductive reasoning, this uses the right brain. It observes patterns in the world and makes predictions. And this is something we do all the time, we have become very good at, without even knowing that we're doing it. An example of an inductive argument is as follows. Point one, every day I have been alive, the sun has risen. Point two, 
therefore tomorrow the sun will rise. Now, although the premise is true, point one is true, the conclusion is not guaranteed. So unlike a deductive argument where if the premises are true, the conclusion must necessarily be true, that isn't the same here. It is extraordinarily likely that tomorrow the sun will rise, and I I do hope it does, but we can't be certain in the same way we can with deduction. The key detail about induction is that it goes beyond the premises. So my premises were about the past, and I'm going beyond the past, and I'm now talking about the future in my conclusion, and this means that induction helps us learn about the future. It helps us extend our knowledge to what we know. And this is exceedingly useful. This is much more useful than deductive reasoning in real life. If you were to track your reasoning throughout the day, if you do any at all, then it would almost all be induction compared to deduction. So in inductive reasoning, we move from patterns in the world to make predictions about how the world might be. So the number two bus has been late every day this week, therefore it will be late today. That's induction. Abduction does the opposite of this. It goes from observations in the world and works backwards to infer what the cause might have been. Consider, and I always think about Sherlock Holmes. So what Sherlock Holmes, or any detective for that matter, does is they'll turn up to a crime scene. They might see blood splattered on the floor. They might, a hundred feet away, see a knife that's been chucked, which has the fingerprints of uh, someone who's just escaped from prison on. They have all that that evidence, those observations about the world, and then they work backwards to infer who the killer was, why the murder was committed, that a murder was committed in the first place. Uh, a paleontologist does the same. A paleontologist uh, who is digging out fossils will observe the fossils and then work backwards to form an explanation of how they got there, what dinosaur they were from, etc. And this type of reasoning, like induction, is very helpful, but does not form conclusions which are certain. The paleontologist can be wrong. It it may have been from a different type of dinosaur. Um, Their explanation for how the fossils got there, again, could be incorrect. And so whenever we form these conclusions, they are never certain, they're never guaranteed, and a better explanation could always be possible, a more accurate explanation. And this incentivizes us to gather more evidence. And that's abduction. I hope you have found this video helpful. If you have, please give the video a like and share it with someone who would benefit from it. There are additional reading resources in the description, as well as some exam style practice questions for you to maximise the benefit of this video. Thank you for watching.